Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this is the first video that I have done properly in a while so I've been really busy and there's been a lot of things going on recently which has kept me away from the greenhouse so I haven't really been in here much and uh, it's only been like over the last, I'd say the last few days that I've actually been in here and looking at the plants and I've noticed that everything now has practically gone into dormancy so I thought I'd do a dormancy video today so I'll give you a rundown of the different um, genus of coniferous plants and um, what to look out for for dormancy so it's kind of like a dormancy spotting video so I keep my plants in my um, unheated greenhouse all year round which is what I'm in now um, there's only some things that I bring in so the only things I brought in this year is my pinguiculars only because I don't have that many um, of the Mexican ping so I've just brought those inside but my other subtropical sundews I've always kept outside um, in this greenhouse and they'll just die back down to the roots and come back next spring so I'll give you a rundown of the different plants so I'll start like with Saracenia first and just show you what to look out for and obviously when to cut them down and obviously to show that they're still healthy over winter so firstly I'm going to start with Saracenia so this is my Saracenia rubricorpora so it's got some lovely, it has some lovely colour this year and the first signs of dormancy is the browning at the top on its lid there and then eventually the whole picture will go brown. So this is my Asian Slax Maxima which did lovely this year, the um, tallest Saracen that is in my collection. Um, I actually quite like the colour of the pictures how they've gone. So this is like pure black, um, obviously it's not a nice sight compared to the actual plant but as you can see like they go from the top down um, as the browning uh, which is obviously the reaction to the cold um, and the days getting shorter so the, all the traps will go like a nice browny dark colour uh, some people have, I've seen people make like displays out of them before like cut them all down and they do make quite a nice like nice rustic kind of colour um, so I haven't cut any of my Saratinias down this year yet um, purely because I haven't been in the greenhouse but most of the Saracenia will make this winter leaf called the Phyllodea so it's a non-coniferous leaf and it helps them to photosynthesize whilst um, winter's coming um, over winter so it's a nice been a nice sunny day today and they will still photosynthesize when they lose all their traps so I'll just show you the majority of my other Saracenias on the other side of the greenhouse so as you can see on the other side it's the same where different um, Saracenias have died down at different rates. So these are flavers here, which do need cutting down as well. And you can see that they've gone into full dormancy. This one, I think, this one is my Su Sussex County, um, which was another red flava. Um, but yeah, some of them are still quite nice. So I've got this um, hybrid here. The Coffelas as well um, have kept. So this is my newly newly open trap of my. Um, Baldwin Giant form Lacophila, which has got some really nice strong colour, so that only opened a few days ago, and it's got some nice lovely colour in that, as well as the Chanel's Ghost at the top there. But as you can see, they're all slowly dying down, so this is my Joanna, but it's still got some okay traps here, and they are all making the Phyllodea, so you can see there's a lot of winter leaves on these now. So I thought I'd just show a quick example. So this is my Saracenia aureophylla sand mountain. It was just a little one that I got this year. And this picture here is fully gone now. So as you can see, it's all the, um, the whole thing is brown. And this is when about I would cut them off. So most of them I will still be keeping on just until they die down completely. And then all you need to do is get some snips or something and then cut them down from the base. Unfortunately, these are not sharp at all. And I'm trying to do this with one hand, but there. So just basically cut the pictures off once they have gone fully brown and what you'll usually be left with in winter is just the violet deer. So this is um, like the Oreophyla have made this like weird spindly kind of um, violet deer. That one's ripped a bit. But um, that is basically what you'll be left with in pots for Saracenia over the winter. Next I'm going to move on to fly traps. So these are my best two looking ones that I've started off with is my mega traps and then my beastie boy as you can see they have started going to dormancy as well from all these old traps here so again with the old traps they just need cutting down i'm using scissors this time um i have lost my really good slips or snips which i use for everything but i haven't found them and i think they're in here somewhere but i just can't find them so 
that is basically what I need to go around and do. I was hoping to find my smaller sticks because they're a lot sharper and easier to cut things down. But just go around and cut off all the dead stuff over winter. So I'll show you an example of ones that have gone down dormancy a bit more. So this is my cup trap, which was quite a nice size. There's about three little divisions in here. And this is what I'm left with. So this is not worrying at all. This is what dormancy should look like. So most of the traps have died down and you'll often be left with the, like these small little ones here at the bottom. But I'm quite excited. I want to divide this one up um, or at least put it into a bigger pot this year. Um, so again, bristle tooth. Um, it's not looking that great either. Small little traps and most of them have died down. So I do need to clear all the dead out of these pots but it gives you a good example actually of leaving all this dead on to show you what um, it looks like so my red dragon here again has got a couple of small traps which are still okay in the middle but again most of the stuff has just died down and this is some Capensis alba and an Alicia at the back there which has just been in that pot so again with my phalanx which is still looking quite nice but obviously again nice black traps here which uh, show the dormancy so again it's nothing to worry about um, it's just a reaction to the cold so they still obviously require the light um, over the winter this is just as the days are shorter and they receive less sunlight they go into this dormancy period obviously the temperature does have a play on it as well you do need a colder temperature for them to go into dormancy and it is healthier for the plant to go into a dormancy as it will help them strengthen like fly traps can miss like one dormancy but it's best that um, they do have a dormancy period to have better growth for next year so all of these that will die down will come back you know twice as big nice and strong for the next year so I've got my fuse tooth there and then my Darwin so yeah you can see the little straggly traps and they're just left with these little traps in here so moving on to temperate drosera now so this is my drosera rotundifolia and here is my drosera anglica which are native to the UK and these are the hibernaculum that they produce so it is just resting buds so these are the little leaves so they've all like curled up into the center of the plant to protect themselves from obviously frost and cold and the main leaves around the outside then again die off and you'll just be left with these little hibernaculums in the parts of this four in here which you can see and it's the same with the anglica here so they again have the small little winter resting buds which are in the middle and there was a whole pot of these so you can see the little individual plants in here which are quite nice um, and I'll just show you my Bonata and my Filiformis so I have here my Drosa Bonata this is my typical form so as you can see the pots don't look that great as the whole plant now has gone but again this is nothing to worry about this is exactly what um, the temperate Drosa um, dormancy looks like especially with these ones so this is just another hibernaculum of a rotunda folio that was in that pot but this is what was left of my banata, so as you can see there's obviously no dew and no green on that at all. And they die down, back down to the soil, and then they will come up again from this pot and when it starts warming up. Same with my filiformis, as you can see, they don't look that great. They also produce a hibernaculum, so it's the fluffy centre that they produce just before they go into dormancy. So you'll start seeing this form in the middle of the plant just before... Um, they start losing their dew and all the green and the colour so again that's something that's a good healthy sign to show that it will come back over the winter and that's what you're looking for so I'll just quickly tie these up and then show you what you'll be left with afterwards so I've just given the plants some nice haircut so the banata is going to stay like this so it's just an empty pot but this is perfectly fine this is exactly what you're looking for it's obviously the plant to die down and then it will come back when the um, weather is warmer same with the filiformis, so I've cut down all the leaves and you're just left with the hibernaculum. So once I clear these other two drosera of all their leaves, that's what they'll look like. It's just a little bit like this, just a single hibernaculum or root ball in the middle of um, the pot. So it's not going to be a great sight over winter, but it's a great time of year to divide and repot some such plants. So I could repot or take root cuttings of the banata over winter and then again they will emerge in spring. Same with the filiformis, I could divide this up now that they've gone into dormancy because this is the best time to be repotting things like fly traps and saracenia as well. So I was just going to make a couple more notes on the drosera. So I'll show you this side of the greenhouse well which is a bit of a mess at the moment. So these are my pots of um, drosera banata var dictamata. So ever since they've stopped flowering they've started producing their lovely, these are the staghorn leaf types that they produce, so they're lovely giant leaves that look like this, they're lovely plants. 
Um, I have had to tie them up though, so that's why they've got like little ties um, on them out of rope because they obviously have collapsed since going into this dormant state and they were just resting over everything else and it was restricting light and all that. So I did tie them up and I've got a few pots full of this and they'll wait until like the others have died down completely because these have still got obviously dew and colour and leaves in them. So when they've fully gone dormant I'll be able to cut them down and move them to a better place. Um, so I was going to talk to you about the subtruffle drosera. So like this drosera capensis here, I am not going to bring it in. So this does not require a dormancy period. Same with like the drosera elysiae that I've got in this pot. They, the subtropical drosera do not need a dormancy period. So if you do want to bring them in, then that's absolutely fine. Or if you've got, obviously if you've got them indoors already, then that's absolutely fine. They won't require a dormancy period, but I keep mine outside. So these type of plants are extremely hardy um, in the way of, but they're really hard to kill. So most of these will die down completely to the roots, so they'll be bare pots as well. But then they will come back from the roots they originally had in the soil, which most of mine did last year and I've still got loads of pots for, so they are likely to do that again. So my Drosia lysiae um, was just one. This was just one plant last year. And then when it came back, it came back as this massive cluster. So. Look how beautiful that is, it's produced many flowers this year as well, which is lovely. And with pygmy sun juice, they are, again, I'm going to leave these ones outside because I'm looking for their next generation. So they are now producing gamier, so you'll be able to see better on the rosanne. So the buds in the middle here of the plant and here, which you can see they've already started to come away from the plant, um, produce new plants. And they're going to produce the next generation of my pygmy sun juice. So I will be taking these out and repotting them soon out of the middle. So the parent plants will either die off during the winter bit from the cold or they might survive the winter. I've had a few do that before, but I always sow the gamier for the next year's generation. So they're like little buds in the middle of the plant which produce new plants. So they're not like seeds or anything. They would need to be planted immediately and on the top of the soil and you'll get the next generation of um, obviously plants, which I keep saying. So that's what I'm looking for forward to as well this year is to have loads of gamia because each plant produces so much you can see again here they desperately need taking because as you can see they're already starting to come away from the plant and make new plants on top of <laughs> the original plants so that's another thing that um dormancy provides you with is the pygmy sun juice dying down and producing the gamia and finally what i was going to cover with you is the temperate pinguicula so these are pinguicula grandiflora and they are a temperate species, again, native to the UK. I have most of these outside in my bog planters, but I do have these two, which are just in a single pot inside the greenhouse, which haven't done as well. They're a lot smaller than the other ones, which are outside. But it's a good one to show what they produce. So this is their hibernaculum. So it's just like one solid bud. This was the original plant, which looks a little bit like this. And again, the leaves will come away after they've died off like that. And you will get your little hibernaculum. I don't know if you can see as well, if I just try and pull it, you can see the little buds next to the hibernaculum, which are the gamier they produce, a little bit like the drosera gamier, which you can sow and also will create new generations of plants, which again, I am trying to take as much as possible from that, from my ones that are outside. And it's another great thing to have. So that's again, what you look for in temperate pinguicula, which they can be kept outside all year and would just stay like this until the weather warms up once again. Okay, so that gives you a rundown of the like four main genus of coniferous plants and what to look out for when it comes to dormancy. So it's the time of year, I guess it's quite worrying as well, like seeing the plant, especially um, if it's like your first dormancy, then it can be quite worrying seeing your plant die down, whether you think it's dying or not. But dormancy is a nice, healthy, natural cycle of the plant and it's great in the way of obviously next year you'll get some great new growth plus it's a really exciting time of year because you get to repot and divide plants so this year i am planning to repot everything i've got in circle pots into square pots so it'll fit better in my trays because i am running out of space and also especially with sarracenia to divide and take rhizome cuttings because as they're dormant you can fiddle with their rhizomes and to look out for healthy growth so I'll be doing a couple of videos on those. I have been waiting to do these um, dormancy kind of um, videos for a while now. And now it's November. I will also be doing a greenhouse tour plus more propagation videos on stuff that I wasn't be able to do like um, earlier in the year. So that's great as well. And now 
kind of the seed seasons come to an end. A couple of them, which I don't know if you noticed, I don't think I showed them, um, of the um, Drosha have still got flowers, which just comes to the end of the cycle. And all of the Saracenia seeds are now harvest, except one, which is just this one here on my um, another just unknown flower hybrid. And seeds are now available on the Etsy shop. So my and Planting Memories um, Etsy shop done some great sales. So if anybody has bought from us, thank you very much. Um, so I'll leave the link below in the description for anybody who hasn't checked it out yet or anybody who wanted seeds or anything like that. The seeds are only available to people in the UK though, so I'm sorry if you are from anywhere else, it is just UK only at the moment. But that is everything for my Dormancy video today and obviously I will keep you updated with more progress in Dormancy and be doing some repotting videos soon. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.